Neural networks learn by calculating the difference between their current output and the true values it's learning from. This difference is encapsulated in a loss function. The process of training a neural network involves minimizing this loss function so that the output of the network is as close as possible to the true values. This process involves calculating partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to parameters in the network's layers. I'm Carlos Lara, and today we will learn how automatic differentiation works in TensorFlow. Automatic differentiation allows us to estimate arbitrary derivatives of functions numerically. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for future tutorials. So the first thing that we do here is we are going to import TensorFlow, STF, and we just uh, check the version, make sure that we're at least in TensorFlow 2, which we are. And now, so TensorFlow provides tf.gradienttape API for automatic differentiation. Now, think of a gradient tape as, let's say you have a, your, your neural network, let's say just linear layers, and imagine a, an, a, like literally a tape underneath it that is recording the operation. So we have an input tensor or tensors coming in, and then they get transformed as they go through the network towards the output. And all of those operations, tensor operations, are recorded onto this tape. And that tape allows us, recording those computations on that tape, allows us to compute the gradient, to calculate derivatives and partial derivatives from the output all the way to the input and in between. And we'll show you how, how that works. So here for this, for this first example, we're going to create a variable called x and it's a tensor. And we'll create a tensor tf.once. So it's a tensor and we're, we pass in one argument here, which is the shape. So we pick two by two. So that's a two by two matrix. So this is going to create a tensor of once with the shape two by two. So it's a two by two matrix of once. And we'll just print it out just in a moment to see what that looks like. Just double check what we're doing. And now we're going to open up here a context manager. And we're going to call it say with tf.gradienttape as t. So this is the tape object where the operations will be recorded. And here this t.watch is just going to, to record uh, those operations. So this just ensures that the tensor is being traced by this tape. It's just a safety check here for the, our input tensor. And as we can see, the input tensor is a two by two matrix of ones, as we expect. And now here, we're going to record an operation here, which is, and we're storing it in a variable called y. And it's tf.reducesum. And reduce sum grabs a tensor as an argument here, as an, as an input, and then just calculates the sum of the elements of that tensor along its dimensions and reduces it to just a scalar. So as you can see, computes the sum of the elements across dimensions of a tensor. And you can specify optionally an axis parameter here. Maybe you just want to do a sum along one of the axis, one of the dimensions. But here, we're just going to reduce the whole tensor to a sum. So since we have a 2 by 2 tensor of 1s, then we expect here y to be a 4, because we're going to reduce the dimensions to 0 dimensions, so just a rank 0 tensor, and sum those elements, which is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 4. Great, and we do, as we can see here, when we print our output, which is a, it's still a tf.tensor object, of course, but it's a tensor of rank zero with the value four. And now we want to do another operation here, stored in a variable called z, and we're going to do now a different tensor operation, a multiply operation. So tf.multiply, and we are going to pass in this y here, which we saw it's four. So four times four, so square it essentially multiply by itself gives us 16 and that's exactly what we get and we're we're printing that out so now that we have those operations recorded onto this gradient tape we want to do calculate the derivative of z so z was the final operation here you can think of the output so the final operation z and we want to calculate the derivative of z with respect to the original input tensor x here and so we just call this tape, this t object here, and call its gradient method. And we pass in two arguments here. We're going to pass in the function that we want the derivative of. And then the, the second argument here is what we want the derivative of z with respect to 
in this case is x. So the derivative of z with respect to x, and that is the gradient here that we calculate. It's a method here within our within our tape where all those operations were recorded. And we're just storing that in a variable called dz dx. Same calculus as you if, if you if you recall, derivative partial der total derivatives are calculated as partial der derivatives, multiplications of partial derivatives, and that's what we call the chain rule in calculus. So now since the input uh, tensor shape is 2 by 2, we expect the gradient to have the same shape because we're calculating the derivative of z with respect to x. So we expect to get four parameters, four derivative uh, values here. And we're just doing a check to make sure that we the, 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 the values here are what we expect. And I'll show you in a, in a moment uh, what that looks like, how we know what values we're supposed to get. Oftentimes it's just, it's complicated. These derivatives, again, are calculated numerically behind the scenes by TensorFlow. But in a moment we'll show you an example and you'll see uh, how, how that works. Okay, great. So we have that and then we have our output tensor as well. So it matches the initial shape, but it has the appropriate values here for the partial derivatives. So again, just to, just to, just to recap, the gradient tape allows us to record the operations. And this could be a neural network, by the way. This is just a simple example to show you how it works. But we, we, we do some, we have an input tensor. We do operations and transformations of that input tensor as it goes through our network, through our layers um, in, the, in the general, in the case of a neural network. And we record those operations. Then we can do gradients, the der partial derivatives of that final operation with respect to operations in between and parameters in the network. Because again, that's really how what we're doing with, the, with a neural network. Network. Our output will be a loss function, and we want to calculate the partial derivatives of that loss function with respect to the learnable parameters, the weights and biases in the layers of that of the network. So let's go to the next. And here you can also re you can also get gradients of the output with respect to intermediate values, and that's what actually happens to the neural network. It's a chain rule, right? So we get all of those in between values. So here we calculated the total derivative dz dx all at the same time. But here, let's say we just want to calculate one of the partial derivatives here. Let's say we just want to calculate dz dy, this, this first part. So we do the same thing. We create this tensor of ones, shape two by two. Same, open up a context manager here, gradient tape. And again, we just watch the tensor, make sure we oper we record the, the operations on it. And then same thing, re reduce some, but and same thing as before. But here we want to do the, the gradient instead of doing the whole gradient here, dz dx, we want to do dz dy, so an intermediate uh, uh, der derivative here. And let's see, and let's see what we get. So we get something different. So here, so the value that we get for dz dy is eight, and the value of d, dy dx is just the the original tensor here, the ones of shape two by two, and that's why we actually get uh, for the total derivative we get this two by two matrix tensor of rank two with eight values, right? Because this eight is actually multiplied element wise, and again this is a little bit more more complicated. Let's actually run that so you see. What we get, same thing, just the difference is the same is the tensor here, the output, the derivative itself, the intermediate derivative. And you'll see in a moment here now in our next example how that works. Now, by default, the resources held by a gradient tape are released as soon as this method is called. So here, you can only call this gradient method only once. If you try to call it again, you're going to get an exception. But if you want to calculate multiple gradients within for the same uh, context here, what you can do is specify an argument here. So the same thing, you open up a context manager, gradient tape, but you specify this persistent argument and set it to true. It's a Boolean, so just set it to true, and that allows you to calculate multiple gradients within for this same tape. So here we're actually initializing a tensor here, x. It's just a constant, so a rank zero tensor with the value three. And we're going to record, do some, some operations, and let's see uh, how this gradient tape, how this, how this works in a simpler case. So we don't do matrices and tensors, just let's do it just with simple scalars, so to, to learn a little bit more about what's going on. So we're going to, to record an, an operation here, which is the square of this tensor, which really comes down to the actual value. So assign it onto y, so x squared, x by x, so 3 by 3, that's a 9. And let's actually go ahead and run it so we get the, the output here. So we have our initial tensor 3, 
right? It's a scalar. And then three by three, it's a nine. And again, that's recorded here because we're in the context manager in the context of a tape, of a gradient tape. So that operation is recorded. Then we print it. And then we're going to record it again. So we're going to now square this output now. So nine, so nine squared, nine times nine is going to be 81. And that's what we have. And let's calculate the gradient here. So now if we calculate dz, the derivative of z with respect to x, here we get 108. And let's see why we get 108. Now let's ask ourselves a question. What is this, this, this function z, consider, considering the input, what is that function? And again, TensorFlow calculates it num numerically behind the, behind the scenes using this, this gradient tape and automatic differentiation. And here, because we're using very simple numbers, we get a clean answer. So z actually is x, square, x to the fourth power evaluated at, at x equals 3. Why at x equals 3? Because that's the input. The input of the network is this value of x is tensor, and the value we know is 3. Now think about it. For our if So we have our our value, our x, if z is x to the fourth power, then let's, what is the derivative of that? So the derivative of z with respect to x is 4x to the third power from calculus, right? That's just a, the simple derivative rule for calculus, right? We just grab the exponent, we bring it down as a multiplier in front, and then we just reduce the power by one. So that becomes 4x, 4 minus one, so 4x, to the third power, which we have here, and we evaluate it at x equals three. So three by three, nine by three, 27 times four is 108. So that's why the gradient is, is that, is the derivative of z with respect to x happens to be 108. Again, numerically estimated and evaluated with respect to the, to the input here. Now, before taking the derivative, just taking z by itself, the value of z by itself is x to the fourth. And you can do the reverse. You can do the integral to the reverse derivative, so to speak, here, and get the the, 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 the integral, right? But here it's x to the fourth. Then we take the derivative of that, and then we get that. But the integral of this is that. It's x to the, to the fourth power. So very, very interesting. And we, and we can see here kind of the combination of of calculus and linear algebra is very central and fundamental to uh, deep learning and, and neural networks here with, with TensorFlow. And now, so we calculate this dz dx, so the derivative of the output with respect to x, but we can also calculate an intermediate derivative here. So dy, we can do dy with respect to x uh, as well. And with same thing, we just call this t, uh, this tape uh, variable here, call the gradient method on it, and then we do the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're calculating both at the same, both individually here, and we can do that as well. Now, because we set persistent uh, to true here in our gradient tape, we have to manually drop the reference to the tape. Um, so to make sure we clean up our, our resources and we have some predictable flow. So that's nice. So we have, we have that. And now also, you can also record control flow. So control flow means conditional statements in Python. So ifs and whiles and, and things like that. And, and the specific the specifics here is not that important, but we just define a simple function of two variables, x and y, initialize this output variable to one. And we're basically grabbing this, this value of y and saying for i in the range of y, so let's say this is five, so we're going to have for i in the range of five, so zero, one, two, three, four, and we're, we have just some conditional statements. So if if i is less than one and i is less than five, we want to to update that variable here with a multiplication, with a tensor uh, multiplication. So tf dot multiply the out the output with that value of x that we that we passed in here. So the point really here is that we want to be able to record onto a tape these conditional statement is condition these because some operations may be recorded or may only happen only within if a certain conditional statement a boolean condition is met so let's see how the, and we just return that output for this function so let's see how that works so we define a grad function here stands for gradient and again it takes in two variables x and y and now with tf dot gradient tape as t again we open up a context manager for the gradient to count to record those operations make sure we watching that input here tf.watch. Let's actually go ahead and run it. 
uh, yep, everything is good. And then, so we have an output, which is this function here. So these the X and Y, we're going to pass them in here into this F function that we define. And we're going to test multiple values. And we're going to take a different values based on whether these Boolean conditions are met or not, because this operation here, this tf.multiply operations, may or may not be executed depending on whether we hit the, we meet those Boolean conditions. And we try multi different values. So we have an initial tensor here, tf.convert to tensor uh, from TensorFlow. So we're just grabbing a, a scalar here, 2.0, and we're just converting it to a tensor. So we grab a scalar and we convert it to, uh, to an actual rank zero tensor, proper tf.tensor of rank zero here. Too. And then we're going to start to pass it pass it in here. And because that's what we need. We need actual tens, tf dot tensors to actually compute these 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 gradients. So those are, are the operate the tensor operations are recorded. So we pass different values and we just convert to numpy, right? So just be, the numpy conversion goes from tf dot tensor to an actual number, as we saw in, in, our, in the previous tutorial, AI programming with tensors. And feel free to check out that tutorial if you haven't already. And we just do some asserts, make sure that we get what we expect. And we can also do higher order gradients, which is pretty cool. So operations inside of the gradient tape are recorded, as we know. Uh, but now we can also have nested gradient tapes that we can record. So for example, here, we can we, let's initialize a TensorFlow variable, tf.variable, initialize it to 1, stored it in this variable called x. And so now a Python variable and a TensorFlow variable are different things. But here, so we're just storing this tf dot variable. And by the way, in the next video, in the next tutorial, we'll show you how you can actually uh, convert uh, very efficiently and serialized and just how you deal with the conversions of TensorFlow variables whenever you want to go into production. So we have tf.gradient tape as t as before, but now we have a nested gradient tape with tf.gradient tape as t2. Make sure you have a different name. We well, have two different gradient tapes, and with and this allows us to calculate higher order gradients. So within the second gradient tape, within the first, we have y equals uh, assigns x times x times x. Okay, so it cubes basically this initial uh, value, and now we want to compute the derivative dy dx. So it's going to be this t2, this second great, uh, tape object. We're going to call the gradient method on it. So that al allows us to calculate the derivative of y with respect to x within here, the, within the second gradient. And then once we go outside of it, once we come back to the first gradient tape context, we can now calculate d2y dx2. So in calculus terms, it means it's the second derivative of y with respect to x. And that's that's the first tape object, t dot gradient, and we just instead of passing in just a function, we we pass in the derivative of a function, which is itself a function, dy dx, and we calculate the derivative of dy dx with respect to x here, and we get some values for that as well. And we can just do some assert statements, make sure we have what we expect, and and we do. So that, again, that shows how you can calculate not only first derivatives, but second derivatives, third deriv derivatives, and so on. So this uh, gradient tape API in TensorFlow gives us an incredible flexibility for calculating derivatives and partial derivatives of, of functions of, of any order based on operations that we recorded, TensorFlow operations that we recorded onto a tape and recording all of those dependencies, those operations, and calculating all of those th those derivatives. And in actual practice, when training a neural network, we want to calculate, we're calculating partial derivatives of a loss function of as an output with respect to layers, with respect to parameters in layers coming before that output layer in that network all the way up to the input. And that's how a neural network calculates that the difference between what we got, what it got, and what it should have gotten, and, and adjust the neural network through the process of gradient descent and back propagation to converge on the optimal network that best maps inputs to out outputs. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below. And also, if there's something specific that you'd like me to cover, feel free to also uh, put it in the, in, the, in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below, turn on notifications, and uh, you'll get notified for, for future tutorials as well. So I will see you next time.